In this brief tutorial, we're going to review some of the Simulink source signals. So, source signals are those that generate a signal. So, it's the starting point of the simulation. And then you have, for example, other blocks that transform that signal. And then we'll eventually put it into a sync. Okay, so the sync is a destination for a signal. It's a result that you want to report or view. And then a source is the signal that is uh, generated. Um, that then becomes uh, a signal that you can view or, or analyze. Okay, so we're going to go into uh, Simulink now, and the way we do that is just from the MATLAB interface. Uh, just type Simulink. Okay, and then once uh, Simulink comes up, then uh, what we're going to do is just create a new sheet. Um, and so the new sheet will allow us to drop in some of these source terms that we can have in our uh, in our sheet and uh, I'm going to create this new sheet just move it over a little bit and readjust uh, my window okay so in the Simulink browser we can either search for these or in the uh, common uh, in, in the common libraries here uh, we have uh, sinks and then sources okay so sources are the initiating points in our uh, in our sheet and sinks are the terminating point uh, where we can view or analyze the signals. Okay, so we're just going to drop in a couple of the uh, common ones here. A constant. Um, okay, so then I'm going to hit Control Plus just to zoom in a little bit here. And uh, so we have a constant. Uh, I'm going to also do um, a couple others here. Uh, let's do a step as well. Okay, and um, we'll do a ramp. Okay, so you can see by the the picture on the source that uh, it gives you a little bit of a clue about what's what's happening there. Um, and then let's also do a sine wave. Okay, and um, let's see any others that we might uh, commonly use. Let's let's go ahead and just do a um, pulse generator. Okay, so we have five different uh, sources here. And uh, if you double click on any of these, then it'll bring up a dialog box and allow you to change the value. Okay, so this is a constant value. I'm just going to change that to a value of 4. And you can also go to Signal Attributes. Uh, I'm just going to leave those alone and click Apply. You can see that the number changed there at the, on the uh, block. Um, here's the step. Okay, so this is the time when the step is going to start. And I'm just going to have that start at time 4. Okay, and have an initial value of zero and a final value will step up to a value of five there. Okay, so we'll apply and uh, now ramp, um, we're going to have a slope here. Okay, so this one I'm going to change the slope to zero point, um, I'll change it to zero point five and we'll have this start at a value of two seconds. Okay, sine wave, we can change this as well. Amplitude, I'm just going to change that to uh, 6 on the amplitude. And uh, see, you can change it. In here, you can change the frequency, the phase, uh, sample time, etc. Okay, and uh, then pulse generator, I'll just go ahead and leave that one alone for now. So now we want to, we have some, some uh, signals that have been, uh, are going to be generated. And uh, let's just see the results of those. Okay, so if we go over to sinks, that's where we're going to be able to put it. Um, we uh, A common one is just scope, if you want a quick plot of the values. And then we have to combine all of these signals into one signal that we put into our scope, if we don't want to have five different uh, scopes. So the way we can do that is through the MUX. Okay, so a MUX will um, allow us to combine the signals. And when you open this, you'll see that you just have two uh, inlet ports here. So what I'm going to do is actually double click this and change it to five. So I have five inlets here. And then I'm going to resize this just a little bit. I'm going to make this uh, a little bit bigger so I don't have such congestion in my uh, signals here. Um, and then just go ahead and connect the two. Okay. Now in this case I'm just going to connect these five and then we'll put the output into that scope. Okay, and uh, now we are ready to run. We can change the final simulation time. 
Um, let's just keep it at 10 for now and uh, then open up our scope okay I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger if you want to resize the plot you'll auto scale it you just hit this button um, okay so you can see the sine wave with amplitude uh, 6 you can see the pulse uh, in the green the ramp that starts at 2 and then the step that starts at 4 um, you can also see the constant value here of 4 in the yellow line. Okay, so let's just change this just a little bit. And um, let's just change some of the, uh, the parameters like the pulse generator. Uh, let's have an amplitude here of 2. And uh, a period we'll put in, uh, let's just say, uh, 4 seconds. And uh, percent of period, we'll do 30%. Okay, and then if we rerun this, we'll see the updated values for the pulse generated um, in, in the green line. So um, this is an example of, of some of the sources. Um, you, know, you may want to also put these through. I'm, I'm just going to move all of these down now. Um, let's say you want to have these be operated on and then uh, be able to see the result as well. Okay, so um, I'm just going to move these signals down. It kind of made it messy on the lines, um, so I'm going to go ahead and just delete uh, some of those, and then we'll just um, reattach them. Okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here, just so I can uh, manage everything on one screen, and um, go ahead and connect these up. You can also rearrange them manually. See how you can grab a line and uh, rearrange it as well. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to clean this up a little bit, and okay, my sign as well. Okay, so actually that may not be too much better. Okay, so uh, let's put it through a first order plus dead time model now. Um, so let's go back to our library browser. Um, each of these signals we want to put it through the same first order plus dead time model. So I'll get a transfer function first of all. Um, and uh, just drag it over here and what I'm going to do is have a um, this is the gain okay so this is I'm going to make this uh, 2 and then a time constant of uh, let's do 5 5 seconds okay so um, we have a gain of 2 time constant of 5 and then let's say we also have a dead time in here so I'm going to put a search for delay and we use the transport delay for this. Um, and let's say I have a delay of, of uh, let's see, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just double click this. I have a time delay maybe of three seconds. Okay, so from when the input, um, from when this signal is generated, just delay that by by three seconds. Okay, so um, I have my transfer function. I'm just gonna rename this as my system and then rename this as my delay okay and, uh, and then if you want to connect um, uh, this to also to this block okay so this signal here I just right click it and it'll take off a, uh, a signal point and send the signal here but also down here okay so um, I'm going to just select this block and copy it make a new scope Okay, for my inputs, and then I'm going to have another one for my outputs as well. Okay, so I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit. So I'm going to send each of these through this same um, system, and I have to copy it, okay, in order to be able to do that. So you'll see it didn't connect up, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and connect each of these uh, to the new systems. I won't copy that other line for the next ones. Okay, and we'll just line it up with each of these. We're just copying the same system. Um, okay, and then uh, just go ahead and copy them over. This one's a little bit trickier to grab. Um, just make sure you um, your lines are lining up there. You get up in the right signal. Okay, and then the other thing I want to do is grab the same. I'm going to do another mux be able to grab all of these signals and then be able to see what the output is going to be 
from sending these input signals through the same transfer functions and uh, and then we'll be able to see the results okay so uh, connected up to this final scope okay so this is the uh, this is the result and these are the signals okay those were the source signals and uh, then we'll look at the final result okay so when I run it again um, my result okay I'm going to go ahead and scale it um, let me go out just a little further in time let me go out to 30 seconds for example and uh, see some of the results and if I open up the source signals as well I can see the source signals and the results side by side okay so these source signals then created uh, these results um, when I put it through a first order plus dead time model so let's just look at one in particular it's a little bit crowded on this let's say we just wanted to see a combination of input and output um, <coughs> Okay, so let's just do it for the step. Um, I'm going to grab another mux over here. Okay, so now I just want to see this step input and uh, the output associated with it. So I'm going to grab the input by right clicking again. Okay, so that's going to be my input and then my output is right here. Okay, I'll run it um, one more time and I'll be able to see a very nice, uh, you know, the step um, that occurred. That was my input, and then I had my time delay, and, uh, and then it started uh, from this point. It looks like seven seconds, um, and then I had a time constant of five. So I'd expect it to be 63% of the way there in five seconds. Okay, so if I go over to 12 seconds, I can see it's 63% uh, of the way to the final uh, steady state value, which is going to be 10. Okay, so that uh, concludes uh, this brief demonstration on some of the source signals and just how to connect things together, how to take a signal and uh, draw it off into two different destinations um, and then bring it back together again.